Hey everyone, this is Daniel, and today's video is a continuation of my Power Platform YouTube special, video number three. And there was a great question that was asked by one of my subscribers, so I'm going to take the time not just to answer it, but take it to the next level to give you some more ideas on how you can enhance it. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get into it. The question was asked by Maximilian Hoffman. Thanks, Max, for asking that question. It's a great question. And to summarize it, basically he's asking how to trigger multiple flows from a single Microsoft form. Now, he did go ahead and ask this question in the community. He got some mixed results over there, so I'm gonna spend the time to give you a thorough answer. So once again, Max, this one's for you. All right, so in this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and now do it in two cases. One is I'll use a single Microsoft form then I'll go ahead and trigger uh, two flows. One flow will actually go ahead and save it in a SharePoint list, and I'll trigger another flow to go ahead and save it in a Teams Dataverse table over there. And I'm gonna show you how to build that flow also in the Teams Dataverse over there. So I'm gonna give you some mixed ideas over here and giving you some more ideas you know, so you can take it to the next level. Um, and so let's get started. So the examples, I've already gone ahead and set that up that way. You know, we didn't have to spend any time prepping this. And I was in a good mood. I wanted to eat some dessert. So I said, you know what? I'm going to build my Microsoft forms about my favorite dessert. Um, so here's the form. Again, the form is simple, straightforward. It's not the premise of this video, but at least I'll walk you through what the form does. The form is basically you know, doing like a little survey. Hey, what's your favorite dessert type? Getting an estimate of your age, diet restrictions. Do you like it for lunch? You know dinner and so on and so forth. It's basically getting some feedback from the community about their desserts to take their products to the next level. So here's the Microsoft form and this Microsoft form is going to trigger flows. We'll go ahead and make the flows and then it's going to save it to two separate data sources. First data source is the SharePoint list. So here's the SharePoint list. Again, I'm not going to spend time showing you how the list was built and well, you know, we're going to spend time building the list, but at least let me show you the bare essentials of it. So it's a very simple list gone ahead and basically all the questions that were there, I'm going ahead and saving them into the SharePoint list, basically as either date or time or a single line of text or multiple line of text. And so what I did was that all of the questions were there, I just added them as a single line of text in the SharePoint list over here. Next thing is in a Microsoft Dataverse. So what I did was I already have a Teams, I call it the Power Apps Champions. You might have seen me use this on other videos. Uh, and in Power Apps Champions, I've gone ahead and created a Dataverse table. So here's my tables. And then in my tables, I've gone ahead and created something called favorite dessert. It's literally a replica of what that list is, but just for your knowledge, again, this is what it is, columns. And then in the columns, I've gone ahead and basically added the same type of ones that you saw it in the SharePoint list. And over here, the data is gonna get saved. So this was basically the premise of all the prep work that I did for this video. Simple, effective, but now let's go ahead and build those flows. So the first flow is gonna to be to build on a SharePoint list, and that's actually the easy one. So let's go back and take a look at the flows. Uh, pick and choose whichever environments that you want. There is no necessity for that, or there's no specifics that, oh, it has to be on the default, or it has to be on something like, because on this one, remember, I am doing it, building it directly on Power Automate. Dataverse for Teams, completely separate discussion, will come over there. But this one is directly the flow, which I'm building it through Power Automate. So pick and choose whichever environment that you want. Now what I've done is over here when I'm going and building the flow, I'm actually gonna use an existing template. So I'm just gonna search Microsoft Forms to SharePoint, or you could just type in Forms to SharePoint, but the one that I'm specifically looking for is a example, which is Save Classroom Walkthrough Data. So I click on it, and we'll go ahead and you know, change things up a little bit, but this is a good one that already goes ahead and creates you that template, so you don't have to build it from scratch, you already have an idea. And then I'll go ahead and change the name over here, I'll say, you know, save um, favorite dessert form data to SharePoint list. All right, so at least we got that. Now, as you can see, it pretty much is the exact same thing, all right, uh, but you wanna do it, just get the data from a form, save it to a SharePoint list. So that template is really slick over there. If you already, you know, kind of use that one because you don't have to reinvent the wheel over here. Um, and then the one that we had was your favorite dessert. Went and grabbed that. And then for inside the apply to each, it goes in and gets all of this. It's a very interesting design of how this works, uh, but it works. So I'm not going to go ahead and you know fix it or reinvent it. Um, I will show you a different style though, which we'll do that in Teams. But just just be patient, okay? And then now here in the SharePoint list, we got to go point it to that SharePoint site. 
So mine was the test site. In my test site, I go ahead and now find my list. Um, and I think I call the list the same thing as well, which was favorite dessert. Moment I go in and click on that, perfect, picks up all the columns. And then from here, it's pretty straightforward. I'll just go ahead and grab all that information. Um, so in the here in the list, I just call it as full name. On the SharePoint, it was called as your full name. Age, I went ahead and called that as basically the age. So I've tried to keep it very similar so we don't you know, uh, mistake which one it is. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and match that up. So right there, pick up your favorite flavor. So I pick your favorite flavor, cone or cup. Um, cone or cup. I personally am a cone person. Just thought you might be interested to know. <laughs> Really depends. And then number of scoops was the last one. Number of scoops. Cool. So I'm going to go and save it. And we are actually done with the initial thing that you must have already been doing is that I've got a form. When the form is submitted, go ahead and save an, uh, data to another data source, which is the SharePoint list. So this is what you already know. I bet you this is what Maximilian has already been doing with Max. Now you can take it to the next level where think about it the form keeps getting multiple entries. And if I go ahead and use that as a trigger in multiple flows, all the flows will run. There is no back end some system, which is like, you know, says that um, there's already one flow which is running, which means eh, it's not gonna let you run another flow, nothing like that. It will go ahead and let you run as many flows as you've gone ahead and, you know, created for that one single flow, um, some single form, so it works, all right? So that's, that's basically your final answer, that the answer is yes, you can go ahead and do it. And SharePoint list was an example over there because it already had a really nice template. So that's when I went and saved it. But now this is where I'm gonna take you to the next level, all right? So now let's go and focus on Teams. So I'm going to my Teams, and in my Teams, I've gone ahead and gone to that table over here. The, um, the table was called as Favorite Dessert, and it's in my Power Apps Champions team. Now in this case, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna to go to my Cloud Flows. I come over here to the Plus New, I go to Cloud Flow, and I select Automate. So that's basically the same process. Um, I don't have the functionality to select templates over here. Um, therefore, you gotta make sure that you know what you're doing and kinda come up with a very simple process and I'll, I'll walk you through that because it became a lot easier over here. So when I'm saying that the, the, the trigger is gonna be the same thing, which is when a new item is submitted in a form and I'll go ahead and create that. And then here, I'm going to go ahead and say, um, favorite dessert form info in Dataverse Teams, all right? And now the trigger is gonna be the Microsoft form, which is right there. And then here, if you remember in the SharePoint list, it actually went into an apply to all. It doesn't do that over here in Teams, which is the Teams Dataverse, which is great. So don't try to replicate what was there on SharePoint list because it was gonna error out. That process works for the SharePoint list. For the Microsoft Dataverse table, it's actually a lot simpler. So the next step, we still need to go ahead and get this information. So I go to my, the forms one, uh, forms, and in Microsoft forms, I still have to go ahead and do the get response de details. And the get response detail is the ID from the form that we just submitted, the form response ID. And that's the only option available so you really can't make a mistake. Now here, you don't have to do the apply to each or anything like that, so don't go and add that. Just go ahead and now add it to your Dataverse. So I'm gonna now put in my Microsoft Dataverse, I'm gonna go ahead and add a new row and then find my table. And my table was called the desserts one, so it's loading. Search for favorite desserts, select it, and then I go ahead and put in all the information. So now here's a confusion that sometimes happens, like I'm not seeing all the tables. Don't let this concern you. Just go ahead and populate the first one, which is full name. And the moment you do that and you click outside, it just goes ahead and actually shows all of them over here. And sometimes you may have to click on the advanced options, but don't worry if you only see that full name or the one row for at first, okay? Now here, you gotta be a little careful also. Don't go ahead and populate everything because it's providing you more information than you need to see. So just be mindful. What I do is I just know, I know my Microsoft form. Like, I just know that those are the bare essentials that I need to submit because those are the fields which are in the Microsoft form. So I'm just gonna replicate, do a one-to-one -one connection over here. So I know age was a question, so I'll answer the age. I know cone or cup was a question, so I'm gonna answer that. Cone type definitely was a question. Go ahead and select that. Dietary restrictions, dietary restrictions. Favorite dessert, a uh, dessert. Well, favorite dessert was actually the name of the table, the name of the flow, so I'm not gonna uh, focus on that at all. Same thing with the next one, not gonna focus on that. Number of scoops, yes, I need to put that because I know that was a legitimate question. Um, owner ID, not a question, ignore that. 
Pick your favorite flavor. I know that was a uh, question, so I'm gonna go ahead and now find that one. Where are you? Yep, right there. Um, not not legitimate, record created, nothing. All the way, all the way, all the way lost. Okay, last, last question, when do you prefer eating a dessert? That was the question that we asked. So, when do you prefer eating a des dessert? And so that was it. Um, I don't have to do any apply to each. If you notice, it automatically also did not do an apply to each. It went ahead and just added the new row and it just takes care of that. Now, I know what some of you may be thinking is that, Daniel, one of your questions, what if it was a multiple choice? Doesn't that automatically put it into an apply to each? Well, it doesn't. And the reason for that is that Microsoft Forms is sending that information, it's sending that form. It already goes ahead and concatenates that into inside the brackets with semicolons. So it does all the concatenation before it sends the data. So you're already good on this side. So now let's just go ahead and do that final test. I'll go ahead and save it. It's going ahead and saving, saved. Let's go outside. And we see our flow over there. So all those, I'll just go and click on it. That way we can keep an eye on that. And now let's go ahead and test it. So we go to our Microsoft Forms. In fact, for here, I'll go and see that outside as well. Yeah, very good. And let's do a test. So my full name is Daniel Christian. My age is this category, diet restrictions. None. Well, actually, I'll go ahead and say, let's say gluten free. And then, what do you prefer? Um, when do you prefer eating a dessert? Usually, dinner is my favorite one. Okay, pick your favorite flavor. Um, I think for now, I'm going to go with strawberry. And um, I'll also go ahead and do, what, am I a cone or a cup guy? I'm more of a cone guy. And I do like a waffle one. And for now, I'll do double scoops. Now, as an example, oh, actually, you know what? let's go and just do this one. Okay? I'm going to click on submit. Form has been submitted. That should go ahead and trigger now both the flows, the flow that we made in Power Automate, the flow that we made in the Microsoft Teams. So let's go take a look at both of them. So I come over here now, and let's take a look at this one. And I'll have to refresh this. And there you go, it went and already ran it right there. So I go ahead and click on it just to make sure everything was good. Sweet, all the events inside the apply to each. So if I go into my SharePoint list, which is over here, go inside, take a look at my favorite dessert. There you go. There's the data. And this is what I was talking about is in the diet restrictions. If I selected even a multiple, it's not a multiple choice. Even I mean, it is type of multiple choice, but it already goes ahead and creates, uh, you know, um, creates the information, formats it into these brackets, and then sends it over there. So I'll do another test, and you'll see how that data comes through. But what is this that in, in the, the apply to each um, is required for the SharePoint list? It was not required for the Microsoft Teams. And this is why, is because Forms takes care of the concatenation for you. It's not the flow that has to worry about that. So let's just take a look at the teams as well. I come into teams and now in my Power Apps Champions, I go to the tables and in my tables, I click on the favorite dessert. Go take a look at the views. And what I do is I just click on the edit data. And there you go. You can actually go in and see that same information that I submitted over there. All comes through just fine without any problems. So as the final test, let's go ahead and now do the multiple selection over there for the flavor and then we'll see what that works. So I go back to my Microsoft form and in my Microsoft form, yep, I'll just go ahead and refresh that or I could have hit the back button, but I'll refresh it. And now I'm going to say Rosanna Christian, that's my wife's name, and let's say that she is both dairy free and gluten free. She usually likes it anytime. Her favorite one is usually chocolate or butterscotch. So I'll go with the butterscotch for now. She's definitely a cup person and she always likes a single scoop. So I'll click on submit. Data has gone through. Both the flows will trigger off. So let's go and take a look at the first flow. Get out of this one. Go in here. Perfect, the next one just ran through. So now you go to the SharePoint list. Oh, it's already over here. And this is what I was talking about. It already goes ahead and combines the data, sends it over there so you don't have to worry about it in the uh, form or in the SharePoint list that, oh, you might go ahead and make multiple rows, none of, or multiple list items, none of that. The form takes care of that and the flow sends it over there. And as a final check, we go back into our um, Microsoft Teams, look at the Teams data versus table over here. I go ahead and now take a look at edit table, or edit data. There you go, you see the second one, same concept over there, went ahead and selected uh, and gave us the information. And remember, in this one, it didn't do the apply to each. That was proof that all this com concatenation is happening already on Microsoft Form site. Since the information, all you got to do is save the data. So as a quick recap, we went ahead and created two flows, 
both the flows triggered just fine even though the form was just one entry over there. And we took it the next level, we saved it on a SharePoint list, we saved it on a Microsoft Teams Dataverse. I also showed how the two flows were different but yet really effective. Like in the SharePoint one, we used the template, it put it in the apply to each. In the Teams Dataverse one, we didn't put it in the apply to each but it still worked. And the big thing that does on the forms is even though when we had that multiple selection over there, Forms already goes ahead and does the concatenation and combines the data. Even the multiple selection, it takes care of that and it sends a nice clean data for you to go ahead and save it. So hopefully this video was helpful and as always, keep using Power Automate. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.